Good day, my name is May Church and I'm with JAMA Software Corporation. And in this session today, we're going to see how to easily reconcile the statement of indirect cost to the income statement in Jamus Prime. To accomplish this today, we're going to run the financial statements, explore the key elements of a job cost transaction in Jamus Prime, describe the different tools that are available in Jamus Prime for data queries, We'll learn how to personalize the data query tools to meet each project's needs, and then we'll reconcile the statement of indirect cost to the income statement. So now let's go run the financial statements in Jamus Prime. To run the financial reports in Jamus Prime, we'll start by going to Finance, General Ledger, Reports tab. In the navigation pane. We have financial statements for the general ledger based financial statements which are different versions of the balance sheet and the P&L. We also have job cost financial statements which is the P&L by cost center and the P&L by cost element. And we also have the statement of indirect expense. For purposes of this session today we're going to reconcile the year-end reports for December 2019. Also, this company that we're running the financial reports for has two overhead pools, a customer site pool and a company site overhead pool. To run the statement of indirect for the period indicated, you just click on the report name in the navigation pane, you select the financial period, that you want to run the report for and then do run report and it will return a report showing all of the costs associated with our year-to-date statement of indirects to begin reconciling to the income statement we'll first run the P&L summary I'm going to right click and open the report in a new tab so we can toggle back and forth to compare. I'll run the P&L summary for December 2019 and run report. And we have our year-to-date income statement with our year-to-date revenue, year-to-date direct expense, our year-to-date indirect expenses for our total net income. Now let's go understand the job cost transactions that is the basis of these reports. To view the job cost transaction detail, we'll go to Projects, Contract, Work Area tab, Explore, where we have our inquiries for data. I'm going to go look at the job cost transaction detail and I'm going to hide the navigation pane so we can focus our attention on the transactions. There is a great deal of information that is automatically captured about every transaction posted. Some of the key fields for today's discussion, you see that there is a job number, the activity the expense was incurred for, the cost element, which describes the type of expense that was incurred. We also have, for our indirect expenses, the burden pool that the cost belongs to. And we have our home org, which links us to the burden pool, the burdens to be applied to the expense. The job number indicates the, either the contract task that the expense is for, or for an indirect job number, it indicates the type of expense, whether it's fringe, overhead, or GNA. The cost element not only describes the type of expense, but it determines how the burdens are to be applied. How does job costing work for that type of expense? It also links us to the general ledger account, 
that will automatically be posted to. The home org links us to the burden pool so we know which burden rates to apply to this expense. So the cost element says which burdens are applicable and the lowest level org determines which rates to apply. We also have some additional key information. Every transaction that's posted has several dates that are part of the transaction. There is a field for the fiscal period there's a field for the transaction date, there's a field for incurred date, and then when a transaction is invoiced, it will post the invoice date, and when revenue is recognized, it will post the revenue date. So these dates are important to understand about the transactions in order to validate any totals that we have. We also have our total cost at provisional, the total amount billed, the total revenue recognized, and the total target cost. So when we're analyzing any reports or validating reports for reconciliations, understanding the components of the transactions that are being summarized in the reports will help and making sure that we pull the right data and that we understand the basis of the transactions in the reports. This particular tool that we're using is called an inquiry and it's an easy to use tool for retrieving data. Based on what we just learned about the transactions, we can pull transactions based on their financial period, the incurred date, the transaction date, the date the transactions were invoiced, or the date that the transactions had revenue recognized. So if I wanted to pull the revenue for a period, I could pull based on the revenue date and then put in the date ranges that I wanted. So if I wanted to retrieve all of the transactions that had revenue recognized in 2019, I could simply extract the data based on the revenue date posted to each of the transactions and looking at the total revenue amount. This tool is also easy to filter in case I want to retrieve the same data or similar data repetitively. You so first of all I'm going to return this to search by transaction date and for the current period I want to filter only on the expenses in the GNA pool. So I'm going to click on filter settings, hit the plus sign to create a row for a condition. And one of the many things I really enjoy about working with inquiries is that what you see in the inquiry is how you'll build your filters. So I'm going to search on the burden pool, which we know is a field in the transaction. And to make it simple, I'm just going to say for the GNA, I'm going to say where the burden pool starts with the letter G and say OK. And now for the period I've selected, I have only those transactions or all of the transactions that make up the GNA burden pool. Now the benefit of using a filter setting is that you can save it to use again and again. So I'm going to go back to the filter settings now that I've tested it and save it. And I'm just going to call this burden GNA burden pool and save. 
I can save this just for myself so only I see this filter or I can choose to share this filter so it can others can use the same filter but I'm going to go ahead and save it private and say OK. So now I have a new filter on this inquiry that I can reuse every time I need to know. And I could repeat this for each of my burden pools if that was helpful for me. But you can filter on a combination of fields that exist in the transactions and save it. And then when you have a data query, you can just simply assign the, select the right dates, go to the tab, and see the transactions. Now that we understand a little bit about the tool that we're using for data queries, the first step in reconciling is to reconcile the total revenue in the income statement. So I don't want to have to add up all the individual transactions, but now that I understand what's the data elements of a transaction, I can go pull some other inquiries that would make it easier to reconcile the revenue recognized for 2019. So I could open up the navigation pane and explore other inquiries. One that I like to use for today that would be make this simple is the contract profitability inquiry. So our best practice is to reconcile each period. However, for our purposes today, I am reconciling the revenue for all of 2019. So I can enter the date range of January through December 2019. And then I can see the total revenue for each contract. I can simply export this to Excel and when the inquiries are exported to Excel it will export exactly as you have filtered and searched for in the inquiry. So I can open up the contract profitability report and just put in a simple auto sum to get a total of the revenue in job cost that was recognized for the period of January to December 2019. Now does that tie to the total revenue in the income statement? So I'm going to go back to our P&L summary and I can see what the total amount of revenue is that was recognized according to the income statement and I can compare that to my Excel spreadsheet. And there does seem to be a slight difference. So let me find out what the variance is. I'm going to take the income statement and minus my job cost revenue report. And I'll see that I have a year to date variance of a negative $41 and 57 cents. Well, how can I easily identify what that makes up that amount? I'm going to go back to our P&L. In the General Ledger module, under the Processes tab, we have Automated Reconciliations. So to identify that variance, I'm going to go to the Revenue Reconciliation and remember, our best practice is to ensure that you reconcile every financial period. So our tools are aligned to pull by period. I know from preparing for this session today that our variance occurred in May of 2019. So let's run the reconciliation for May of 2019 for my revenue GL account and it compares what was recognized for revenue against the project, what was the revenue posted to the general ledger, and what if any variance may exist. And if I look, I do have one of my revenue entities 
where I have a variance of $41.62. So the reconciliation report will show me exactly where the variance occurs and it will also let me go directly to the journal entries that contributed to that variance. So I'm going to go look at the journal transaction that was posted when revenue was recognized. And I can see that the $41.62 came from this particular batch. I can even go look at the invoicing batch that this was created from. So I'm going to go view source document And I can see that the $41.62 is the amount of retention. I happen to know from researching this prior to today that what occurred is that we had a new billing specialist who um, didn't follow the instructions on how to do billing. Because we have controls in place and automated setup to drive that the correct GL accounts are posted to. But this particular person did a workaround manually, which then led to a posting to the wrong accounts. So we can contact that billing specialist and ask them to correct their revenue batch. And when they re-recognize the revenue for that project, for that period, it will eliminate the variance that occurred. So there are many reports and inquiries available. These are the inquiries I prefer to use when I'm reconciling revenue. And as you can see, comparing an inquiry to the report and identifying and identifying if there is a variance is easy to trace to the source and resolve by the way the transactions can be searched and by tracing back to the source documents to easily identify the cause of a variance and to correct it. Now that we've reconciled the revenue that was recognized in the income statement, we'll complete our reconciliation by reconciling the expenses in the statement of indirect expense. To do that, I'm going to go to the Processes tab to the Actual Burden Rates, where we can calculate automatically our actual rates for any period, in our case, year to date. So I'm going to hide the navigation pane and I started by adding a new batch for our year-to-date actuals 2019. So that's covering the date range for the entire year. And then I'm going to say process all. And then this inquiry is going to calculate our actuals for 2019. So you can see what the year-to-date expense is by each burden pool, what the base of the expense is, and the actual rate that was calculated. So before I reconcile the expenses from the income statement to the statement of indirect, I want to make sure that the reports or the inquiries tie to the trial balance. So I'm going to open up the navigation pane and I'm going to go to the Reports tab. And we have Incurred Cost Submission Reports, which I find very helpful in each period's reconciliation. So I'm going to go to the Expense and Base Schedule, which is an inquiry where I can retrieve that actual rate we just calculated. And I first want to look at the expense side of the equation. I'm going to hide the navigation pane. 
and first ask to look at it by GL account. That way I can tie that this inquiry does indeed include all of the expenses posted to the general ledger. So I'm going to go run the trial balance. So I'm going to open a new tab. And I'm going to go to Finance, General Ledger, Reports, and run the trial balance for December 2019. And I'm going to compare the ending balance in the trial balance to the GL accounts that are in my incurred cost report just because I like to verify that there are no variances or um, mistakes that were processed and that I can rely on the actual rate that was calculated. I also like to prepare throughout the year for each period the incurred cost submission reports so that they're ready at the end of the year when I need to submit them. But the incurred cost submission reports are also very good tools for reconciling the financials. Once I've compared that the cost in the expense and base schedule tied to the trial balance, then I'm ready to look at it by burden pool. So now I'm going to change from GL account to burden pool. And I can tie the expense amounts that are included in the actual rate to the P&L. So I have my direct expenses and I have my indirect expenses. So I can now tie the expense amount in my expense and base schedule to the P&L report and see that the inquiries and the income statement do tie. So I have my total expenses, but we want to break them down by department. So I'm going to go run the statement of indirect. for December 2019. Now I can reconcile the statement of indirects to the income statement. I can see the total fringe expense in the statement of indirects. I can see that that ties to the fringe expense in both my expense and base schedule and also in the P&L. I can verify the base. So I'm going to go back to my expense and base schedule and now look at it by base. And I can see that the fringe base totals $828,643.06. And if I look at my statement of indirect, I can see that that's also the fringe base. So I'm confident that the rate that was calculated for fringe is accurate. So now that we've seen that there are a variety of reports and inquiries all for reconciling our financials, I want to complete validating the statement of indirect expense. So I'm going to open this up so that I can view the statement of indirect expense next to my actual rate calculation. So in our previous steps we've already validated that the expense and base for each of the burden pools ties to the trial balance and the income statement. So now we'll reconcile the statement of indirect to our actual rate calculated. So on the statement of indirect, we've already validated 
the expense of the fringe pull, the base of the fringe pull. So now I can confirm that it ties to the percent calculated in the actual rate. Next, we'll look at our customer site overhead pool and we can see that the overhead expense ties to the expense that the base ties to the base and therefore the actual rate for our customer site overhead matches as well. I'll go to the next page and compare the actual rate calculated for our overhead company site so I can verify the company site overhead expense. I can verify the company site base and therefore see the actual rate calculated ties as well. I'll scroll down so that we can see the G&A expense ties. I'll go to the last page where I can verify that the G&A base ties to the actual rate and also ties to the G&A rate that was calculated. So reconciling the statement of indirect expense to the income statement really is very simple. Each period, we validate that the financial statements tie to the trial balance, and then we can easily match the statement of indirect expense to the actual burden rate calculated by burden pool. The, all of the inquiries and reports in Jameis Prime are real-time data. Therefore, if we were to find an adjustment or additional transactions that needed to be posted, we would simply go post those transactions and immediately we can rerun any of the inquiries and reports to include those adjustments. There's nothing additional that needs to be done for those transactions to immediately be reflected in any of the inquiries or reports. So let's recap what we've learned that makes the reporting of the financial statements and the statement of indirect expense easy in Jameis Prime. Let's go back to Project, Job Cost Transaction Detail. I'm going to hide the navigation pane. And review the basis of all of these financial reports. So in the job cost transaction detail, as transactions are processed in the normal course of business, they're posted into the job cost transaction detail. And some of the information that's captured is the job number, the activity the expense is incurred for, the cost element, which describes the type of expense, as well as which burdens should be applied, how should job costing be calculated, for that type of transaction. We also have the home organization which links us to the rates that are applicable. We also saw that there are a variety of dates that are captured automatically in each transaction. There's a financial period, a transaction date, an incurred date, an invoice date, and a revenue date. 
which makes it very easy to drill down to specific transactions. We also have total cost at provisional, the total amount calculated for billing, the total amount of revenue recognized, and the total target cost. I want to take a deeper dive into a single transaction. So I'm going to go look up an incurred date in January and you can see that we have expenses charged to both our indirect projects so fringe, overhead, BMP, G&A, all expenses are charged to a job number. We see here that we have an overhead job number capturing overhead labor into our government cost site lowest level pool. I can also see that there are direct expenses So I have direct labor. Let's drill down and take a more detailed look at this. So I can see the incurred date, the transaction date, the fiscal period. And over to the right, you'll see the calculation of our cost at provisional, the amount of the transactions calculated for billing, the amount of the revenue to be recognized and our cost at target. I can even see each element of the cost. So the raw amount, how much fringe was calculated, overhead, G&A, the total amount of provisional billing revenue or target, and the total quantities if they apply. Because these amounts are calculated at the time the transactions are posted, it helps in making all of the reporting that we've been looking at real time. Because all of these amounts are generated at the time the transactions are posted. And not only can I see all of the details for job costing, if I go back to the transaction in the grid view, I can also see where this ties to the trial balance because the general ledger account becomes part of the transaction as well. Any report or inquiry is just a sum of all of these individual transactions in the job cost transaction detail. So with the indirects expenses being charged to a, an indirect job. We can separate out the total details of the fringe expense or our G&A expense. We also have our individual projects so that we can roll up the expenses associated with each individual contract and task. So it makes it very easy and flexible for reporting on all of our expenses. We can personalize the inquiries for our own personal data preferences. We saw that we could create a personal or shared filter as we did to create our GNA burden pool tab. We also have the ability to modify the grid layout specific to our preferences. I can click on the grid icon and while there are many 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 details that are captured on every single transaction, I only need to select viewing the elements I'm interested in. So under the selected columns I can list only the fields I'm interested in and I can even reorder them to suit my own personal preference.
In addition to the details that are captured on each transaction, we also have a variety of inquiries and reports. I'm going to open up the navigation pane and we can see under Explore that we have a variety of inquiries looking at individual details or summarizing information. We also have financial reports. So for example, I'm going to go to Finance, General Ledger, Reports, and we can see our financial statements. So there's a variety of balance sheet statements. We can look at the balance sheet summary, or we can look at it in detail, and we can look at it as a comparison. We also have different versions of the P&L. So we can look, we've already been looking at the P&L summary, but there is additional P&L layout, such as the detailed, a comparative, looking at the P&L for each quarter on one report, and looking at it compared to the budget that was set up. We have our statement of indirect expense, So there's many different inquiries and reports to support financial reporting. So to wrap up our session, in our session today, to reconcile the statement of indirect expense to the income statement, we first produced the financial statements. So we ran the income statement we ran the statement of indirect expense. We also saw that we could run the trial balance and a balance sheet. We explored the key elements of our job cost transactions. So we learned about the different dates and the different types of calculations captured on each transaction for both indirect expenses and direct expenses because understanding the basis of the reports helps us personalize or query and to validate the information that's available. We described the various data tools, so we ran reports such as our statement of indirect and the income statement. We also learned how to use inquiries such as our actual burden rate, our job cost transaction detail, and then for the incurred cost submission schedules, we ran reports and inquiries. We learned how to personalize these data query tools, such as creating filters for specific data in our inquiries. We also saw how we could change the sort criteria or the selection criteria and how to personalize the amount of details that are provided by personaling the layout of the grid. Lastly, once we understood the data that we were comparing, we were successful in reconciling the statement of indirect to the income statement. So I thank all of you for attending today. Again, my name is May Church and I am with Jameis Software Corporation.